Hello everyone, welcome to the implementation of RESTRON on iOS XE devices. RESTRON stands for Representational State Transfer Configuration Protocol. In this video, I will talk about how to implement and configure a HTTPS basic protocol called RESTRON on iOS XE devices such as CAT, 9300, 9500, 3K and so forth. So before start, let me introduce myself. I'm Krishna Gupta. I'm working as a technical marketing engineer at Cisco Systems in Enterprise Switching and Wireless PU and my main area of focus is automation and programmability. RESTConf is a representational state transfer configuration protocol based on HTTPS and it provides a programmatic interface based on standard mechanisms for accessing configuration data or state data and defined through the YAM data model. RESTConf is a stateless protocol and NetConf is a session oriented. So for those who are new to NetConf, NetConf also similar protocol like RESTConf and it uses SSH protocol whereas RESTConf uses HTTP protocol to talk to the device. These are different methods available in RESTConf. Uh, as I said earlier, RESTConf uses secure HTTP methods to provide operations like create, read, update, or delete, like the CRUD operations, similar to NetConf. And these are the main operations that are available in RESTConf. So let's discuss each method. So the options method is sent by the client to discover what methods are supported by the server. So it's for example, like the patch, delete, post, those are the different methods that are supported on the server or not. And the next one is a get method. Get method is sent by the client to retrieve data and metadata for a resource, like get config or a get operation in netcon. And next one is a patch method. It is used for updating any configuration on the switch, like uh, to create any IP, new IP address or create, a uh, create any VRF, you need the patch operation. So in patch, we will just update, but we cannot create. And in the put method, it is used to create as well as replace the target data resource. And it is most popular method for provisioning any network device using RESTCON. So in put method, you can create as well as replace the configuration. And in post method, it is used for to invoke any operation or if we want to create any data resource, we can use a post method. So invoking an operation is similar to like the reloading or writing config to save the config or ping. These are like the invoke operations we can do with the post method. And the delete method, you can delete the target resource like you want to delete any IP address you can or delete any VRF you can use the delete method and head head method is just to get the header fields without any message of the body it just returns the header fields the same query parameters supported by the get method is supported by the head method also HTTPS return codes so these are the status codes that are used to report success or failure of a response operation. So these codes are kind of a acknowledgement to the client. When a server responds with the 1xx status code, that means the received update is under processing by the server. So when you receive like a 2xx, it indicates that the client's request was accepted and processed successfully. 3xx is a redirection indicates that a client must take some additional action in order to complete their request. When an error code return is in the 4xx or 5xx range, if it is 4xx, it is a fault at the client and if it is a 5xx, then it is fault at the server. So this talks about URI, URM and URL URI is a uniform resource identifier. It is a combination of a URL and URN. Using URI, we send a request to the server to retrieve or configure any data from the client. 
URL is a uniform resource locator for obtaining the representation of a resource that is like specifying the network uh, location like the IP address of a switch. And URN is a uniform resource name that identifies a resource by name in a particular namespace. So URN is like to talk about a resource without implying any location. For example, uh, a URN may be compared to a person's name while a URL may be compared to his or her street address. So in networking terms, if you want to like the stacks of, if you want stacks of an interface on your switch, IP address of the switch is a URL and interface stacks is a URL and combination of URL and URN is a URL. How to build a URI? First, we need the restaurant root resource and most of the times it is common to all the URIs but initially we need to get the restaurant root resource. When first connecting to a restaurant server, a restaurant client must determine the root of the restaurant API. So the client discovers this by getting executing this command like slash dot well known slash host metadata. Uh, and in this example, the client uh, would receive the output from the server as a slash restaurant. So this is my restaurant root resource. So after discovering the restaurant root API root, the client must use this value as an initial part of the path in the request URI. So after discovering the root resource, then we need to find out the API resource. So API resource, we can get the API resource by sending slash restaurant and the server might respond as follows like with IETF, restaurant, restaurant as the data operations and the young library version. So uh, data, data represents configuration or state data that can be accessed by, by a client and the client uses it to edit or retrieve data resources. Operations, this is an optional resource and it is used for saving config to start up or restart and this is purely for operational purpose and it will be used by the post method as I said earlier in the previous slides. And the last one is the IETF uh, Young Library. So it identifies like the revision date of the Young modules. So once client knows the root resource and the API resource, it is now ready to send to the device. The client can retrieve the data models of the IETF Young library module that are supported by the server. So, if you execute any of these APIs, you will get all the list of the modules that are supported on the server. So, in this example, the client is retrieving the capability information from the server supported by the restaurant query parameters. So, if you if you execute this API, uh, it, it will the server will respond. What are the capabilities that are supported on the server? It will respond to you. These queries are represented in URIs to view the data in different ways like the filter option. For example, if you want just interface IP address and not like the whole interface configuration, then you can use these query, query parameters to get the data. And these query parameters are very, very powerful. Uh, so if you want to retrieve any data in only in a specific format or in a different way, you can use these query parameters in your URI. And these are some of the guidelines how to implement queries uh, in your URI. For example, query parameters can be given in any order and these query parameters are like the case sensitive. And these are all the query parameters that are available. So for example, the content query parameter controls like how descendant nodes of the requested data node will be processed in the reply. Then the depth a parameter is used to limit the depth of subtrees returned by the server and it is a like an integer between 1 and 65,535. Fields query parameter is used to optionally identify data nodes within the target resource and the next one is the insert query parameter. It is used to specify how your resource uh, should be inserted and these are other query parameters like the point and the with the default values. 
So how to enable a rest call on a CAT9300? It is very simple. Go to the configuration mode and just enable rest call. So it will enable the rest call uh, interface on your network device. And rest call uses HTTPS, right? So that's why we need to enable IP HTTP secure server command as well. And that's it. So let's see a short demo on the rest call using Postman. So Postman uh, is a free online application it is available in internet you can download and you can play with the rest call using the postman so in this demo i'm going to use postman to configure or retrieve any data to our network device cat 9300 so initially when you download the postman you need to add your device so for that you can choose like what kind of authentication you need so usually i will go with the basic authentication and you need to provide the username and password and then you need to add some headers so for example let me show you the header like any input so these are the two headers that you can add in for the restaurant so accept header is a way for your client to specify the media type of the response it is expecting and the content type is a way like to specify the media type of request being sent from the client to the server so once you enable the authentication and the headers that's uh, only two things you, you need to add and then we can do some api calls okay first let's try with the root resource so we are already in the root resource So when you send this uh, API to the device, this 172.26.198.63 is the IP address of my switch and as I said in the slide that dot well known post meta is used to find the root resource. So here in the switch replied the output saying my root resource is a rest call. And the next step is I need to find the API resource right. So I already saved my APIs in a in like a collections so in postman you can cre you can create any directory and you can save all your collections to like all your uris to get any particular collection and to find out the api resource i need to give my url and followed by the root resource so restconf is my root resource right and my authentication is there and my headers are there okay so let me send that so this is the expected value from the server so uh, root my root resource is a data operations and young library version so again data represents either configuration or state data and operations is an optional resource it is used like for the saving config or ping and this uh, young library version identifies like the revision date of the young models that is implemented by the server and the next we will see the api of the modules So let me send this to the switch so these are all the modules that are existing on my server that is my cat 9300 so there are so many modules that are already available on the cat 9300 okay so you can see whatever modules that are supported or not you can see using by this api and the next method we will see the capabilities let me send this so these are all the capabilities that my server supporting all the rest call query parameters like the depth default values and fields so these are all the query parameters whether it's supported on the server or not so next next go to the options so options method is just to see whether what methods are supported on my server so if i do send here i shouldn't see any data but if you see, click on the headers field it will show you what methods are you are allowed on the switch like delete get hit uh, patch post put and options are different methods that are supported on my server and the head head method is used for just to see the headers again if you click on send 
I shouldn't see any data but if you see the headers so these are all my headers that the server responded to this API okay next go to the get method okay get method access so in this API I'm this is my URL with the root resource and uh, and API resource with IETF interfaces as the IETF Yang model with interfaces container right if I use this API to send to the switch so whatever interfaces configuration I have on my switch it will display for all the interfaces configuration right and for example if you want to see only for particular interface configuration there is so much available right for example if you want to see for only loopback 101 right let me use this as a slash interface equal to it's already there loopback 101 and let me send this now i got only for the loopback uh, interface loopback 101 And next go to the foot operation okay here I am changing my host name to actually let me see first what what is the host name on this on my switch so first to the get operation and currently it says catalyst 9300 is my host name okay now let me change the host name to something else like maybe like awesome switch so to do the put operation we need to provide the data like whatever host name you want you need to send the data uh, that uh, host name as a, like something host awesome switch and then same header fields I'm using and in the method I used as a put method so if I do the send so if you see here my status 200 for no content so 200 is good uh, 204 because I'm configuring the device right so I shouldn't see any uh, body here uh, let me do the get for this just to make sure the host name has changed or not now if you see the status if 200 is okay it's good and it will show you what is 200k means now you now the output it shows my host name has changed it to awesome switch next we will do the post operation so here I'm conf configuring the domain name as cisco.com first we will do the get and then we will do the post so first we will see if, if I have any domain name on my switch or not the output shows nothing okay now let's do the post so it says 201 created so that means good and now let me do the get again so now the name as uh, IP domain name is cisco.com next we will do the patch operation so in the patch operation I am configuring uh, interface 1010 with some IP address so this is my IP address for the 1010 interface I want to configure this IP address and the mask so if you see in this URI uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet is 1010. This is represented in an ASCII format because slash is uh, it should be uh, converted to the ASCII for that. 2F represents the slash in ASCII format and the percentage is a delimiter. So in online you can find how to convert to a ASCII formats. Uh, so you, you need to use in ASCII formats for representing slash or double quotes or single quotes, anything like that. So before that, let me do the get config for this same interface. So I don't have anything in for the interface for that interface. Now let's change to the patch operation. And 204 is no content, it's good. So it's configured. Let me do again get for this. So now my interface was configured with this IP address and the mask. Now let's do the last method that is available that is a delete IP address. So now whatever we configured for that uh, IP 
for that interface 1 0 10 we need we want to delete that so first let's do the git operation for this now we have that IP address and mask right let's delete that so it was deleted it says no content it's good now let's do the get again I shouldn't see any body so these are all the methods that are available in Postman. Most of the times we use get, put, post, patch and delete methods. That's it from the Postman demo. So try to implement TrustConf on iOS XE devices like Catalyst 9300 and play with different methods and with different query parameters and have fun. Thank you for watching.